let us pray. O God, who on the solemnity of the apostles Peter and Paul, give us the noble and holy joy of this day, grant we pray that your church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of right religion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, King Herod laid hands upon some members of the church to harm them. He had James, the brother of John, killed by the sword. And when he saw that this was pleasing to the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. It was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He had him taken into custody and put in prison under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. He intended to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter thus was being kept in prison but prayer by the church was fervently being made to God on his behalf. On the very night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter, secured by double chains, was sleeping between two soldiers, while outside the door guards kept watch on the prison. Suddenly, the angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and awakened him, saying, Get up quickly. The chains fell from his wrist. The angel said to him, Put on your belt and your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Put on your cloak and follow me. So he followed him out, not realizing that what was happening through the angel was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first guard, then the second, and came to the iron gate leading out to the city, which opened for them by itself. They emerged and made their way down an alley, and suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter recovered his senses and said, Now I know for certain that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all the Jewish people were expecting. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The Lord. the Lord delivered me from all my fears. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from out like a libation. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth, the Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. 
To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to Glory you, O Lord. Lord. When Jesus went to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Please remain standing and make the sign of the cross as the bishop blesses us with the book of the Gospels. Please be seated. Father Steve, our Vicar General, Father Denise, our Rector, the Parish Priest of the Cathedral, my dear brother, priests, reverend sisters, my dear people of God, isang pinagpala at magandang araw po sa ating lahat. At aking binabati, hindi lamang po yung nasa cathedral, but all those who are shun, one with us through social media. We honor today the martyrdom of the two great pillars of the church, Saints Peter and Paul. Many of us look at the Roman church as the center of Christianity because in Rome resides the central government of the Catholic Church. And yet we all know that 
Christianity did not originate in Rome. It originated in Jerusalem. Jesus was a Jew, so were Peter and Paul. The church was born from the open side of Jesus who was crucified and died in Jerusalem. And before he ascended into heaven, Jesus told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem until they were clothed by power from on high. From Jerusalem, forgiveness of sins will be preached to the ends of the earth. And so, through the mandate they received from the Lord, the disciples began preaching in Jerusalem on Pentecost Sunday. From there, they started their apostolic journeys. Peter, on the other hand, went from Jerusalem to Antioch. From Antioch continued preaching until he reached Rome. In fact, the first see of Peter it was established in the house of a Roman senator, St. Pudens, which is now the center of the Filipino communities in Rome, Santa Pudensiana. And Santa Pudensiana is the daughter of St. Pudens. Paul, on the other hand, after his conversion, embarked on a missionary journey which also ended in Rome. Both saints, Peter and Paul, were martyred in Rome during the infamous persecution by Emperor Nero. And so, as far as the Roman Church is concerned, Christianity is an imported religion brought to them by the preaching of foreign missionaries. Christianity was an Asian religion that was transported to Roman soil. I say this on the occasion of the 500th anniversary of Christianity in the Philippines. The tendency of some historians is to consider Christianity as a foreign religion that was used to colonize the Philippines. Christianity is seen as not being Filipino. It's not native to the islands, but it was brought here by Spanish missionaries. But who can boast of Christianity as being native to them? All countries receive the Christian faith through the preaching of missionaries. The mandate which the church received from the Lord himself was to go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The Lord commanded the church to baptize everyone in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and to teach them what Christ had taught his disciples. This is the very mystery of Christ's incarnation. In the incarnation, Christ embraced everything that is human except sin. As Jesus was born as a Jew, he embraced what belonged to the Jewish culture. In like manner, the church embraces the culture that accepts the gospel that she preaches. Thus, the church became Roman for the reason that the Romans accepted the gospel. The church became Spanish because the Spaniards accepted the gospel. In a similar way, the church became Filipino because we accepted the same gospel that the disciples received from Christ. This reflects the very mystery of the incarnation of the Lord. A mutual embracing. 
of taking up unto oneself, of embracing our humanity so we may embrace His divinity. The church as Catholic is one of the is the one of faith is one faith professed by as many cultures that accepted the gospel. The church then continues to be incarnated in every heart that received the gospel so that the human in us may become a reflection of God's glory. In the words of Pope Benedict, the aim of the church's mission is a humanity that has itself become a living glorification of God, the true worship that God expected. This is the profound meaning of Catholicity. The mystery of the Incarnation is also reflected in our priesthood. By our ordination, the Lord embraced our humanity and weaknesses and allowed Himself to be incarnated in our very being. By our ordination, we also embrace Him in whose priesthood we are being configured. Being configured because seminary formation has never rendered us as finished products, but as an ongoing reality of an ongoing incarnation. And in the words of St. Paul, until such that we can say, it is no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me. Once again, my dear brothers and sisters, a mutual embracing of the Lord who embrace who we are so that we may also embrace Him as He is. And perhaps none could be more powerful a reminder of this reality than the sacerdotal office we fulfill as presbyters, as priests. For the liturgy we preside over as priests is no mere commemoration of what once existed, but is living and real. It is the enduring life of Jesus Christ in us and that of the believer in Christ, eternally God and man. My brothers in the priesthood, do not be surprised then that even as priests, you experience brokenness, disappointments, frustrations, and even loneliness. These are the effects of our Christ. You have to be torn apart and recreated until Christ is formed in you. This is the very mystery of the Incarnation which must always continue to challenge and at times even shake the way we live our priesthood until Christ is formed in us. My dear brother priests, as you renew your ordination promises today, I ask you to be aware of these two great mysteries, that of the incarnation and that of our priesthood. Both are mysteries of Jesus, and the mysteries of Jesus have this characteristic that are yours as much as they are His. To each His mysteries, He attaches a grace which is to help us reproduce within ourselves His divine features in order to make us like 
unto Him. May this be a source of collation even in these difficult days. Let us remember in a special way our brother priests who are no longer with us, especially our priests in the dais of Kubao, whom we recently lost. Monsignor Ben, Monsignor Morty, Monsignor Dan, and Father René Nadwa. May Christ, whose mystery they have been made stewards here on earth, welcome them too into His rest. Dear brothers and sisters, we look to Mary as our model and companion, who in her faith allowed the mystery of the Incarnation to take place in her womb. Romano Guardini, one of the great spiritual writers of the Church, tells us that what happened in Mary does not concern us at a holy distance, but fashions for us the unique, unattainable, and yet primal form of what should take place in the life of every Christian. The taking shape of the eternal Son of God in the life of the man of faith. This is what should take place in the life of every priest. That the eternal Son of God may take shape in his heart. And so let's continue to say yes to the Lord. And let our yes be total and unconditional until we can say like St. Paul, it is no longer I that live, but Christ who lives in me. As we honor St. Joseph this year, we ask him to pray for us that we may imitate his total yes to God's plan of salvation. Amen. Please all stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Beloved sons, at the Last Supper, Christ our Lord conferred on His apostles and on us His priesthood. Are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? I am. Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conform to Him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church, which prompted by love of Him, you willingly and joyfully pledge on the day of your priestly ordination I am are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching following Christ the head and shepherd not seeking any gain but move only by zeal for souls I am as for you dearest sons and daughters pray for your priests that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ the high priest so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation Christ hear us Christ graciously hear us and pray also for me that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my loneliness and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and a more perfect image of Christ the priest the good shepherd the teacher and the servant of all Christ hear us Christ graciously hear us. May the Lord keep us all in His charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. Amen. Please be seated.
please all stand. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. Lord, may the prayer of the Apostles, O Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift that we present to your name for consecration. And may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For, by your providence, the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, bring us joy. Peter, foremost in confessing the faith. Paul, its outstanding preacher. Peter, who established the early church from the remnant of Israel. Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so each, in a different way, gather together the one family of Christ and revered together throughout the world, they share one martyr's crown. And therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy this gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ernesto, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you and their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Give us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen.
Please all stand. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the church, the persevering in the breaking of the bread, and in the teaching of the apostles, we may be one heart and one soul, may steadfast in your love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to some words of thanks, our General. First of all, we'd like to thank our uh, diocesan uh, elder servers. Let's clap our hands for them. <laughs> then our uh, beautiful choir with angelic voices, so beautiful in singing, the grand choir of uh, diocesan Shrine of Santorino. Thank you very much for the singing. <laughs> we also thank the uh, chancery staff for organizing this uh, priestly renewal today. Let's clap our hands for them. I thank you, Father Ron, for uh, heading the Deosasan uh, altar service, our uh, chief liturgist, Father Ron Ron. Thank you. And thank you to our fellow clergy here in the Daishku Bao, as uh, you have just renewed your uh, priestly vows. At this point, this is the first time that we have gathered in large number as a clergy of the Daisku Bao. I want to present to you two groups of priests. Last year, around this time, in the month of June, we have uh, the bishop ordained two new members of our, of our clergy. And ang umaten lang sa kanilang ordination at that time ay parang anim lang kayo, no? Or wala pang sampo kasi it was still ECQ. But they became priests. You have met them virtually in our Zoom meetings, but it's different when it's face to face. So I, I would like to call our new old day priest to please come forward to present yourself. These are big bundles of joy already. Mga newly ordained pa lang, pero ang lulusog na. Una ay si Father Edward Cometa. He's the uh, parochial vicar of Our Lady of Miraculous Medal in Project 4. You are lucky. You are with Father Greenman, Father Nelson. 
And the next one, another little big bundle of joy. Ito nagsasabi lagi, Father Pogi po ako, si Father J.P. Katilogo, parochial vicar of Our Lady of Hope. So, suerte mo rin, kasi nakay fraka, Father Raymond, one of our uh, uh, good priests, best priests next to me. <laughs> so, yun po si Father J.P. and Father Edward. So, please uh, give them a beautiful welcome. And please... Uh, after this Mass, greet them. Pinapaalala nila na yung regalo nyo hindi pa dumarating sa kanila. The second group of priests ay yung pong mga priests on loan natin. And uh, the first one, uh, he used to stay with me uh, for two years in Christ Aquin Parish as a guest priest. He's a member of the Assumption Fathers. Now he's assigned as pastor of San Roque Bagumbayan. May I ask uh, Father Ricky Montanez to be recognized? Where is he? Ayon, kita yo. And another one from Zamboanga, also a very good priest. We are very lucky to have them with us. The second one is the pastor of San Isidro Labrador Parish, uh, San Baito, um, Pinyahan, the street. Um, um, uh, anong, anong kalsada nila doon? Huh? Malakas Street, no? Si Father Adlai Bare. Please stand. So you have seen them sa Zoom, but it's really different if it is face to face. Please, after this Mass, go to them, introduce your task to bring the Gospel to our communities, to the church, to the places that we are serving. We need this renewal. Ano bang ibig sang hindi ng renewal? Renew, re, ulit. Again, new, bago. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng bago? Bago at luma. Sa bago at luma, ang naalala ko, Bishop, si Monsignor Morty. Nakasama ko sa kumbento, pagsakain na na, pagka yung pagkain ay ulit, pangatlo, pangat-apat na serving na, ayaw na niyan. Kinakain pa rin niya, pero ayaw niya. Pag nakita niya sa gabi, kaninang maga pa ang ulam na ito eh. Ah, buha ganun siya. Pero pag bago ang ulam, ganado siyang kumain. No? Ganadong kumain. Nung bata pa tayo, pag may bago tayong damit, as far as I'm concerned, nung no, pag may bagong damit ako, excited na excited ako suotin yan pag magsisimba kami ng mami ko. So when you say new, there is excitement. Ikaw ay ganado. Ikaw ay ganado. When you say new also, one time, I was listening to these kids, teenagers, nag-uusap-usap. Ha? Sira ang cellphone mo? Eh, di ba one week pa lang yan? Bago yung cellphone mo? You're expecting that the cellphone will be reliable. That it will work. Because bago. And I think to be renewed is to have that excitement. To have that passion for the mission. To incarnate, to prolong the presence of the gospel here in this world. And also, maging brand new ulit to become reliable workers in our work and mission. Sinabi rin ni Bishop, at some point, we will experience disappointment. We will be broken. We will be misunderstood. And that's why we need this renewal. Because the renewal is meant to bring us to our original state, to make us fresh again, to revive us. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng renewal. So thank you, Bishop, for your message. And we, on behalf of the clergy, we promise, kasama kayo ha, we will promise na sa ating, uh, sa ating mission to continue bringing the gospel to the people we are serving, meron tayong passion Meron tayong excitement, ganado tayo, at magigit tayo mga reliable workers in the vineyard of the Lord, especially during this pandemic, that people need to feel the presence of the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Muli po, maraming maramat sa inyo, sa fellow clergy, at sa inyo, Bishop Ness. God bless.
the Lord be with you. Bow down for sin. May Almighty God bless you, for He has made you steadfast in St. Peter's saving confession, and through it has set you on the solid rock of the church's faith. And having instructed you by the tireless preaching of St. Paul, may God teach you constantly by His example to win brothers and sisters for Christ so that by the keys of St. Peter and the words of St. Paul and by the support of their intercession, God may bring us happily to that homeland that Peter attained on a cross and Paul by the blade of a sword. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Mabuhay po ang dahi sa Cubao, mabuhay San Pedro at San Pablo. For our picture taking, may you invite our priest to please stand in place way the bishop and the diocesan fa fathers the curia fathers to stand at along the center aisle thank you